Hi, I'm Dalen with Mesa Wink, and today I'll be showing you how to install the Eclipse system. So for this video, we've already installed the, the cover track. Um, if you haven't seen that video, go watch that video first. Um, so right now we're just gonna kind of jump in at this step. So you're gonna open our system box, cut your tape. Um, first thing you wanna check is make sure you have the right motor side. Um, so of course, how you determine your motor side, behind the cover box, then the pool. This one, the motor is going on the right hand side. Um, you need about three foot offset. Um, so we will see we have our motor side here, the motor attached, the legs for the system, our cover switch, all the hardware you're gonna need, your non-motor inside, and obviously the cover pump for the homeowner. And then some of your instruction guide and the homeowner information all in this. So we're gonna lay out our non-motor inside, upside down, your motor side, upside down, just like that. And we're laying it upside down so we can attach our feet. Um, another important step we kind of just kind of brushed over. Make sure your cover box is already cleaned out. We've already done that step. Okay, so we've laid out the motor side, now motor inside. We're gonna attach our roll-up tube. Grab this guy. And you wanna make sure whether this was ordered cut to length or if you just got a stock tube. Um, this one is already cut to length, so it's three inches smaller than your guide space. Um, so when you order this, if you ordered it with your pre-concrete stuff, you're gonna have to cut down your length. So measure your encapsulation to encapsulation your guide space and then cut it down three inches under your guide space. So if this was a 20 foot pool, we'd cut it at 19.9. In our hardware box, let's crack it open. Inside, and a couple different things. So we'll have some machined Phillips head screws and 3 8 nuts. We'll use those for the attaching the arms, some extra carriage bolts, 9 16 bolts, and lock washers. This is what we'll use to attach the the tube, small self tappers, 5 16 head, medium self tappers, uh, 5 16 stainless steel screws with the molly bolts to anchor the system into the wall, some extra uh, bonding lugs, and some rope guides needed. To attach your tube, you need split washers, Put those out, That's garbage. You have eight, so four on each side. I like to pre-make them and get them all set up ready for me. On your cone here, four holes. On the end of your tube, you have a lot of holes, but only four threaded holes. One, two, three, four, right? So you have these little notches. What I like to do, hold the system down, kind of butt that up and let that Rest just like that. So you're gonna use 916 wrench, socket, whatever you have. Screw that in. And we'll do the same thing to the non motor inside. This top first one started. And be careful, this is going into a plastic housing. Um, so if you're using a wrench or your, your socket set, not to crank it down super, super tight and you know, potentially damage those threads. Um, if you do use an electric wrench like this, just you know, go slow and steady. You don't power it out or anything like that. You wanna make sure it's going in correctly. We've attached the tube. Now we're gonna attach the legs here. So to get that measurement of how tall we need to be, we're gonna measure to the top of our encapsulation, from the bottom of the box, which is you know, pretty flat, what we're measuring to. I'm gonna call that right at 14 inches. And then on this side, do the same on this side. 14 inches, okay. We've got our legs. Comes with three legs. One, two, and three. The same as the tube. We have our, our bolts, 7 16 and some lock washers. be right there at the bottom of this bracket, all the way to the bottom. Get a nut. Get 
Just take that same hole you put it on, on the other sides. And you see you have these machined holes with the threads. Those ones are gonna go on. Nice. Same thing on the non-motor inside. like that, if you're by yourself. Come to the non-motor inside. Kind of set it in. Motor side, drop it in. <laughs> we've dropped our system in, now we gotta center it. There's two ways. Our left to right orientation, so our ropes are coming in straight, or as straight as possible on both sides, and centering your tube in the middle of the cover box. Um, so there's a couple ways to do that. Um, so first thing, I, I have a piece of track here I'm gonna use. Um, you can use a level, whatever you have handy. Set it across on your coping. And measure down. Get that measurement. Six and a half. Come to this side. And so basically what we want is the tube to be as high as possible where it's not gonna rub on the cover brackets. Um, that way, if there's any debris or anything in the bottom of the cover box, it's not gonna rub on the pool cover, but also not rubbing on the stones. So we're trying to get that level off. Six and a half on the dot, okay? Next, we wanna make sure our left to right we're good. And we want these ropes coming in pretty dang straight, just like that, straight into the pulley and elevation wise as well. But we'll adjust that in a second. How I center the tube now in the cover box. Um, you can get a tape measure and measure it out. Um, but I like to try to get that measurement. Sometimes it's a little off for me. So I just get my hands, put them in there, and kind of just adjust it as necessary. You know, and center that, find that sweet spot in the cover box, just like that. Next, we'll expand our cover arms uh, into the cover box. Against it flush, we can get a nice good mount. Um, sometimes you're gonna have to make adjustments to make this, either the rope kind of come in and down and dangle, um, or it's not gonna be perfectly coming in straight to get a good mount. That's okay. You're gonna have to kind of play it by ear and each job's a little bit different. Um, this one, I have pretty good mounts on all sides, so I should be okay to get that to go on pretty dang straight, but no, on some jobs, you're gonna have to kind of make it work and that's okay. So the reason I like to do the track first before installing my mechanism is what we wanna make sure is this, the mechanism, this rope is coming in straight into this pulley um, as far as like horizontally and vertically, right? So basically when you're setting this tube in, we're looking for a couple of things. We wanna make sure we're centered in the cover box and centered left to right. Or, uh, so what I like to do is the rope's already ran. Quickly pop it around the pulley. And you do that is on this side, it wraps around this side, not that hole right there. So, get the camera angle on this. Around the pulley and out that side hole, down to your motor side. And so what we want is that looking straight like an arrow, but also height wise. So these arms go down quite a little bit. So I'm actually gonna lower these arms so they can get a good set for these brackets as well. See, the same thing on your motor side. I'm gonna kind of get the rope. I like to kind of bend it, make a little hook with it. Um, but we're gonna go around this first pulley, down to the second pulley. So up and in, goes back and around. And you have to kind of guide it and feed it. And a you know, flat head. Pop it down, push and pop, there you go. Kind of pull that tight. And so like I said, this one's a little bit better. So we're looking for this straight into the pulley um, and then also up and down, we want that straight as possible. On either side, see this bolt here on the brat and the mechanism arm? One, two, and same thing on the other side. We're gonna loosen those just enough where we can you know, expand it to where we want it and adjust it. Crank elevation and center the cover system. And you just have to loosen them, you're not trying to take them out. Now, you can set that the elevation I want it to. And that system's gonna be pulling in, that rope is coming in as straight as possible. So if our tube is centered, and we like our 
where it's sitting, we can lock it back into place. Um, what we want here is to find the best mount you possibly can. Um, so sometimes we, if you need be, if you need to go a little bit lower, just so you can get a good mount. Um, I think getting a good mount, you gotta find that sweet spot of, you know, having it perfect to also being able to not pull out in a little bit. So I'm gonna try to line that up, kind of that grout just like that. Tighten that in right there. Now for on this example, my front side um, doesn't have a great mount up top. Um, so I might have to go a little bit lower than I typically would really. Ideally you want these nice and level just like that. Um, but then I'm gonna kind of sacrifice some good mounts in that concrete. So I'm actually gonna go a, t a little bit lower than I normally would. Get that a little bit flusher. Okay, get your arms and, and try to get find that sweet spot of you know, this is what it has to be and good mount. So I like it right there. Let's go down. Okay. And the same thing on that non-motor inside. We should have the two bolts from your camera angle. You can see one there, one there. Obviously it's just the 7 16 it's not on this side. Um, so we're gonna loosen those. Just enough where you can get it to play. And you have all these extra slotted holes. You can see it better on this side to make necessary adjustments if needed. Um, so your ropes are nice and straight. I like it right there. I'm always gonna double check your things, make sure we're good. Ropes coming in straight, I like it right there. On that spot, we're gonna get your good mount. And the motor side, front motor side, you got a good camera, you'll see I got a kind of a big divot right there. So on this side, I'm gonna have to Probably go a little bit lower, see that? And what I'll do is, that's okay. What I'll do is I'll bend these down so I still get these support arms um, to get that kind of locked in. But for the sake of getting a good mount, that's where we're gonna do it. So we have our 5 16 head stainless steel screws, um, a molly bolts that come with it. Sometimes they're blue. Um, I like to put them, pre-assemble them before I go drill the holes. So you just kind of get a couple turns in there. Basically now I can just hammer that in and then screw it in. So get going. I can see this, but down here, there's pre-drilled holes through the mechanism. And there's two over here, you know, a bunch in the back. Same thing on the other side. So what we're gonna do is put as many as we can in good mounts. Four to six on each side until that thing is really secured and locked into place. Um, we're gonna use a hammer drill or a masonry or a rotary drill. Um, quarter inch drill bit. The size for those mollies. Your screw, pop it in there, the hammer, tap it in a good amount of way, and screw it in. Perfect. Now, with that side locked in, I'll go drill a bunch of holes, get that side mounted, and do the same thing to the other three spots. So for the mechanism cross arms here, we have all these pre-drilled holes and all these slots here. Uh, and the idea is that you can find whatever different option you'll be able to find two screw holes that are about right. We're gonna use these um, machined Phillips head screws. You have two in each arm, so four here, two on the other side. The three eighths nut on the bottom. Um, sometimes you kind of have to play with it a little bit. Like get that in, get a nut on there. And if you find whatever two holes line up the best, I try to spread them out as much as I can. Um, just now you have two pivot points so it can't collapse in on itself. Um, the farther out the better, in my opinion. If you do use a drill for this, make sure you do on a low setting, those fine threads sometimes can heat up and you don't want that, so just go nice and slow and crank that down nice and tight. Okay. Always good practice. So these carriage bolts that lock in the arms down here, you can see that guy. Um, it comes with a couple extra. 
I like to add these um, just so if this does ever fail, and that's just that much more support locking into place. Um, so, put one in each arm. If you can, sometimes the way it's mounted, if it's the box is too big, you won't be able to get one in, but if you can, I always think it's good practice. So, you know, try to find a hole, do it just like that, um, or you can. Um, now this is really gonna make it so the system can't move. If there's too much tension or the homeowner runs it with a lot of water on the pool cover and um, or they hold the switch for too long and it, you know, it's cranking the system back, it's, it's not gonna collapse in on itself. This is an important test to do every time. You step on it, do a couple jumps. She's all ready. Okay, that's everything for today. If you have any questions about what we did, go ahead and give our office a call or call your account rep. And you can always go ahead and find more information at getmizu.com.